To celebrate CK Fee's first birthday last year, I performed a Game Breaking World Congress on the first day without ever unpausing. As you might imagine, this required a strategy consisting of completely game breaking exploits, and the gameplay was very far removed from normal Xeer Kings. I uploaded it on YouTube back then, and it has since gotten over 10,000 views. Because it is my most viewed video where an explanation would make sense, looking at you, any percent runs, I'm making this to experiment with scripted explanation videos. Without further ado, though, let's actually explain the strategy of the run. The strategy mainly consisted of two exploits. Let's look at them separately before combining them to the final strategy. First off is the Education Grant exploit. It was first publicly showcased in a video on the 28th of June 2021 by Hopelike like Crusader King's YouTuber 1 Prop Bavarian. The very next day it was patched out of the gap. I actually never seen this clip before or since. So, what was so special about this exploit that made the developers act so quickly? Basically, it made it possible to vassalize most of the world without ever even pausing the game. Sounds crazy, it is. The way it worked was like this. If you hand yourself or one of your children over to a foreign ruler as a ward, you could grant an educator as a vassal to somebody. Why this worked, I honestly have no idea, but it did. I started planning a super fast world congress the day the exploit was shown, but after it was patched immediately, I lost motivation to plan an optimized run and gave up my plans. About a month later, on the 23rd of July, Crusader King's Legend Sandwich 8 sent me a new exploit he found on Reddit. Reddit user u slash Bennett Luck had seemingly discovered a way to switch characters in Iron Man achievements enabled. In contrast to the Education Grant exploit, the character switch stayed in the game for far longer. It was finally patched in 1.5.1 after the developers already tried to an original 1.5 patch. The way it worked was that you tricked the game into believing it was a non-Iron Man game, with all the features like character switching, but after you saved it was converted to an Iron Man game. This game state is called Shooting as Iron Man. The original setup used in the run was entered by clicking on a wall when selecting your character then pressing enter to start the game. These two exploits are always very powerful, but it might not be immediately obvious how you would vassalize all of the world with them. On first sight you can only grant vassals to your own vassals, limiting you to only counts and dukes. Luckily, it is also possible to grant vassals to your leech. This leads to the strategy of playing as a vassal to an emperor, most of the game, granting as many characters as possible to your leech and then switching to them in the end. Doing this very repetitive task in LC7 allows for vassalization of all but 6 characters, 3 children and 3 emperors. Let's look how to deal with the children first. Luckily, all of the children in LC7 are counts and can be completely conquered by their neighbors on day 1. This is the reason I played in LC7, because there are more children in LC6, some of which are kings, this wouldn't be possible. Doing this, you go to the game over 3 times. You might feel that the save file would be somewhat destroyed by game ordering, but luckily that isn't the case. Loading the save file puts you into the normal character selection screen, and this doesn't have anything to do with one of the two exploits, it's just an inherent fact of the game that's still part of the current version. Because we're in the normal character selection screen now, we can enter Shrilling as Iron Man again the same way as before, repeating this three times there are now no remaining independent child rulers, half of the problem solved. Dealing with the empires is a bit more complicated, but not by a lot. First we need to switch to the emperor in question, then grant all titles you can to a vassal. Then we switch back to a vassal of the main empire and grant all of the vassals of the empire in question to our leech. This works because education grant exploit not only works on independent rulers but on vassals in other realms as well. This leaves the empire as a one county realm. It still isn't possible to vassalize them but it makes it easier to usurp the empires which would make vassalizing impossible. To do that we need to have 1000 gold each, so 3000 in total, and have the main empires be the same religion as the empire to be usurped. Getting the 3k gold is very simple and just involves switching between a lot of characters and gifting to the main empire until it has the required amount. There are a few possible combinations of selling faiths and later switching, but the one I used was putting a custom Ashari character on the Kyrgyz Khanat. It has to be the Kyrgyz Khanat by the way, because the empire title doesn't have any land associated to it and so can't be usurped. The Arbitrists can obviously see we are usurped without any conversions because they all start as Ashari. Kazaria was usurped by them converting to Ashari and the Byzantines by the main empire converting to orthodoxy. With bad RNG this might not be possible, but that would just require resulting the run. With that all the hermetic realms are dealt with, and the rest of the characters can be granted to the main empire in a very repetitive and tedious process. So let's get to the end. After switching to the empire that now controlled the entire world, it now came to the task of making the Schrodinger's Iron Man game into a normal Iron Man game. That is very easy though, you just need to exit the game, reload and bam. The game is now an Iron Man game with achievements enabled. And that was a strategy that made it possible to conquer the entire Crusader Kings world in one day. I intentionally didn't explain every every detail and uh, 
didn't make this as a guide because it's no longer possible and I don't think anybody will uh, patch back and copy this. Um, I've really struggled to put up scripted videos in the past. Um, I've attempted many, but I never finished any. Um, I also really struggled reading the script here, but I decided it's better to put out an imperfect video than never making anything scripted at all. But yeah, thanks for watching and until next time when I either put out a two hour uncut video or pull through and finish a scripted video again. Bye.